Bats. Gerel. Gerel. Goed noem. Gerel. Ask me a question. What's up? Tell me how I can help you. This week. So last week we talked about Doc May, right? Where are some Doc May that we talked about? Uh, let's see. We did uh, places. Places. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we about police stations and government offices and skyscrapers and barns. Net show. Net Veng home. Net show. Net show. Vaj jichvad dak mei te rich klingan chol bolot tachvish. Nuk och bank klingan chol jaslut tachvish. Belly. Bank jaslu. Nuk jas? Belly. 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 Mm hmm. Belly tutlu. Nuk lat tutlu. Lat nuk. Trebo, give me another name of a, of a place. Nuk. Nuk. Uh, which uh, which place? Nook Dock Dock. You win. Ka Ka Jack Danach. You win. Um. Bailet Jack Caitlin. Ah. Uh. Ach 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 Dock Ha Dock Ha. Um. Mut May Chu. Mut May Chu Chu. Um. We Ro We Roj Bor. We had that. Vaj, vaj, jiyaj, jiyaj. Because, mu, mu, I only remember the words that I knew before. Mm -hmm. It's too complicated. Dash of, dash of, dash of, nech. Toch. Vaj. Jiyaj, ka? Mu, me, da, shov, bo, nech, da, shov. Jiyaj. Da, shov, bo, nech, da, shov. Doch, ka. Jiyaj. Toch. Mu je jat ed shukhvad klingan khol pong venob. Vaj je jat. Chai. Police station. Ev. Ev. Shukh. Jikh. Shukh. Kheb o. Train station. Um, Lut me... Lut me... What's a what's a train station and or what's a train? Just start off with it. What's a train? Is it, isn't it Lutmir or is it just a tr tram? Lutmir. Almost Lutwitmir, and that can also be a tram. Lup Lutwitmir. Um, also have a word for a station. Do you remember what that is? No. It is Mangra. Mangra. Mm-hmm. So you could have a metro station, right? So a Wut Lupwitmir Mangra, so a an underground train station. Right? Um, you could also have a Lupwit Mangra, so just a bus stop, right? That might be a Mangra home, right? Especially if it's just like a sign. What else do we got? Yotar. What's another place that we talked about? Either in English or in Klingon. If you don't remember in, in Klingon, then I can you can say, oh, what's this again? And I can remind. Touch je. Touch? Mm-hmm. Edge edge mushwit khat tutlu. Je. Much khat. Right? There's much khat. Is a, a presentation restaurant, but its its translation into English is a cabaret, right? We have a touch. We just have a regular cut as well. Cool. Large. Would it be like a dinner theater? It could be that. Yeah. It's a dinner theater. You go to, to it's a restaurant, and then they also have like a show. Yeah. We went to see um, Camelot at a dinner theater. So they serve your dinner when it's over. There's a full plate up on the stage. So you get dinner oh, and a Oh, yeah, show. right. I've seen it once. I've been to 
not to sing once, but I, is it the same as cabaret? Because I, I thought I'm always thinking cabaret is at 30s or 40s. Uh, cabaret uh, cabaret tends to have more nudity, if memory serves. Uh, it doesn't have to, but it's, it's more uh, linked act than an actual play, a story. So let's take a look at the gloss and let's take a look at the actual words that make up the, the word mucha. So mooch, presentation or show, right? And then khe, restaurant. So whereas, yes, in English, it tends to be more on the uh, risque side of things. Um, it might not be in Klingon. And in fact, I, I would say it probably isn't seen as a mooch khe. And then um, the show that you would go see at a mooch khe would be a khe mooch, right? So a restaurant show. Yeah, there you go. Cool, what else? Thiago, what's one doc that we talked about? Yeah, uh, one that I remember was uh, uh, kumkach. Kumkach, yeah, it's a good one. Kumkach. A, yeah, a government. government yeah. 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 You might also go into a lochkach, right? An administration building. Yes. Or um, what's another good government building? Um, Permit building? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. You could also okay. even call that a chaukshukmechkach, so a, a building for obtaining permits. Do Klingons have a Department of Motor Vehicles? <laughs> uh, maybe, but you could maybe call that in Klingon, it would be probably a puchdujloch. Right, so the the, did we have court? I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah. But before I do that, the Puchduj Kach is, or Puchduj Loch would be a land vehicle administration, or you could even call it a Puchduj Tomb, right? Um, a land, a car organism. That's probably a better word for it, but Loch is fine too. And then just add a Kach onto the end of that, right? So the building. Um, yeah, so the word for a court is a boat dig, B O Kahwit D I J. And does that cover like the courthouse? Yeah. Okay. And then you is also there... use that in a bunch of constructions regarding um, legal terms. So there's the word for um, like a lawsuit is a boat dig cod. The word for a trial is it bukdij miu, the word for evidence as it pertains to a trial is a bukdij nompuk, right? So that's, uh, that's criminal. Just evidence. a second. Do you want to record this also? I did it start it yet? Yes, I have started. Yep. Okay, sorry. I have that's not okay. seen here. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a bukdij bukdij? At the show back. Chalk. Isn't it a bird? Yeah, yes. a bird, bird court. And boat dig sounds similar, so I thought there might be a boat dig, boat dig. That's where you would get your falcon permit, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, how about we talk about animals today? Speaking of, speaking of, uh, no, Chiago, you're no. shaking your head. You don't want to talk about animals? No, no I, I, we haven't talked. Yeah, we can talk about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like I just know a few words. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I misunderstood. Sorry. Does everybody know the roti pun? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I totally love it. I learned a new pun today uh, during the Kotvin Pep, right? Um, so during the Kotvin Pep, by the way, uh, no, I'm going to talk about that after, but hold on. So we got this new word during the last kept ah, and it's rolek, and it means flake. So I was talking about my breakfast, and I was saying that I was- Oh, I didn't understand the rolek that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, so that's what we were talking about. We were talking about flakes, and I was talking about my meishtir rolek, which I was gonna eat, so corn flakes, right? Meishtir is corn. So I was talking about the meishtir rolek that I was gonna eat, and how there was no milk, so I was gonna have to eat and um, 
then Hun Chu, I left and got the coffee and I came back and Hun Chu Wit said, <laughs> we found a new pun. It's like, lay it on me. Cause I hate, it's not that I hate puns. It's more that they exasperate me. And <laughs> what does it mean? Exasperate, sorry. Uh, moch, moch. Uh, frustrate. <laughs> frustrate, okay. Um, and he said, so he said, just, you don't moch, turn it around. So I thought in my head, okay, Q, E, L, O, G. Oh, <laughs> ah. I heard the Kellogg, but I didn't understand it was a pun. I like missed that out, unfortunately. Yep. So, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> I love um, puns. It's like one of the best things ever. It's my type of humor. Yeah, yeah they're pretty good. There, there's some pretty good kid puns. Um, but there's some real groaners. Kid. What? Nook, nook, or kid? Kid? Joke. Oh. The joke. Yeah. So a kid is a word joke. So a pun. Okay. Um, so, kid is joke, and when you're joking, you're kidding. So, is that yeah, itself that's a another, pun? Yeah, that's another. It's 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 a le it's one of the few less well hidden puns. There are a couple that you have to really. The best are the ones you have to work for. Those ones like kid and nourit are you know like very surface level. Uh, so nourit is the noogie, right? Yeah, that's. Tanugi, so it's almost the same. Yeah. Well, that they may have just gotten from uh, Terran or Federation standard. Chalk, chalk. Yeah. Or maybe it's just a los chalk, a coincidence. Possible. Ooh. So, Chatnibach. 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 Are you offending me? Hayad, Hayad. Chotich ah. When that was first used on, when that was first used on the next generation, my friend at work walked around calling everybody Habadash. 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 <laughs> From the Habadashery. Uh, so, yeah, Chatdebach. Chatdebach is the Klingon word for animal, right? It's, or meat. It is also the word for meat in Klingon, right? So it's either animal or meat, which is a little messy. Have to tell by context. Yeah, depends on context. Um, the if you are stuck in a situation, I was recently stuck in a situation for a writing project, um, and I had to say that there was this dish and it had a lot of meat in it, um, but the the dish is already like it's it's just an animal already, so the problem was how do you talk about like um, something that ha like an animal that has a bunch of like meat you know in it um, to make that distinction. So the solution that I came up with was just use oinot to distinguish right. So that the animal contains a lot of oinot and oinot is flesh. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about some animals. Um, uh, yeah, we can talk with, we can start with just regular, like broader terms and then zoom in on certain animals. Um, so we already talked about boat der, right? Which is bird. a bird, right? Boat der. Yeah. Um, there are also rotit and bich dep, which are Fish. fish and yeah, yeah. This one is easier to understand if you don't know the, a word for fish, right? Already, and if you came across this, you could be able to figure out what it is. So, bich means water, right? And dep is a, a being, a creature um, that's not humanoid, right? Um, so that would be a fish. Is it exactly the same? Why are there two expressions, two words for that? Um, as a, this is a more general word. Uh, and this, uh, this is definitely more common. Well, 
Rokit would be fish, but Bikdep could be lobsters, sea urchins. Yeah, maybe. Anything, right? Beyond fish? Any any water creature. To avoid to avoid saying something that I don't. Okay, so Bikdep. This covers most animals that live in the sea, such as dolphins, whales, fish, octopi but not smaller animals such as shrimps or water bugs or amphibians. Every, mm -hmm. every rotet is a bikdep, but not every bikdep, bikdep is a rotet. There you go. Okay. There you go. Um, and then uh, as Yodtar was pointing out, there is a, an excellent pun in the word <laughs> rotet. So there's, um, if you don't, does anybody not, see the pun here Did not anybody get the joke i learned the joke from the batman tv series when i wasn't when yeah. i was a little kid it was amazing to me that you could do that with letter combinations and stuff yeah so we have in english we have oh and um what was the other one with um what what makes this what what women what women it? oh oh w yeah there you go yep women okay so in English we have uh, words where there's a letter but it's totally not the same like it's a weird letter to have, but, yeah. so we have women which is really pronounced women like that we have rough which is really pronounced you know like that rough um, really more rough uh, and then we have like gumption right which should really be more like this right I think on Batman it was nation. Yeah, so whatever the the T I sound. Um, so Mark took this right, and then the the O from women right, and then um, the T I sound right, and it's fish. And and Doctor Okran didn't come up with this joke, but it, he's 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 riffing off of it. So um, that's what the joke is there. If that helps you remember the word, all the better. If it's just it a thing for you, that's that's good too. I usually don't remember words using puns i just remember the sounds that's what that's what my strategy is and um the jokes are just a nice i remember when this was discussed on the mailing list back in the 90s one person suggested that it might be a reference to john Gotti, who was swimming with the fishes yeah. people corrected that to sleeping with the fishes but they all agreed that no it had nothing to do with john Gotti. it yeah. was the fish pronunciation button yeah um do y'all mind my uh somebody's calling me is it okay if i just pop off for one second yeah. what if we say no uh, too bad okay then it's it's a part of a routine and i'm gonna miss the sundays when they're gone yeah i can't believe you'll miss me that much uh, of course i will don't think like this I, i'm just uh, a troublemaker I, no not at all <laughs> But I just want need to say that uh, being together with uh, all of you made me really learn a lot. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, it I, me a lot. To which I've always been pretty asocial, and I have like you know eight Facebook friends. But I've pretty much doubled that since starting to study Klingon. I got a bunch of Klingonists in my my Facebook now. I don't use Facebook. I only uh, today I only use Facebook to check the the, the Klingon groups. <laughs> That's mostly what I use mine for as well. Yeah. Um, Come back. All the other. Maybe I should get a Zoom and just. Uh, I mean, I have a Zoom, of course, but like a paid Zoom, and yeah. I could just. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Get people and say that we're going to talk Klingon, but only on a very basic level, like chat, but on a. Like, That'd be great. Yeah. I can understand something. Well, your basic level is still seven or eight yeah. times above my basic level. Oh no, so. oh no. Today I ba barely understand anything about the Kellogg and the Kellogg and like. I wouldn't I have gotten more than one word in seven or eight if I had been there, but you're able to talk full sentences with Dash Du, which I can't really do yet. I don't even understand all, always what this do answers me. I want to converse. Hey. And so I, 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 I answer something and he answers. I'm like, mm -hmm. 
Okay, I just did half of it. <laughs> and then well, you kind of piece in the rest. <laughs> it doesn't help that Dash Goop talks so quickly. Yeah, that's I try why to I slow like myself the... down, especially when dealing with beginners. But that's why I'm not good. I don't think I'm a good like beginner teacher. Um, oh, but... teacher, you're a great teacher. Yes, well, you are. You are a great Ooh. teacher. <laughs> Ooh. I think he stinks. Jehetsho oh, yeah, Troublemaker. <laughs> Uh, by the way, a great way, a great vocab word for to say that something sucks in Klingon um, is to say not. Not. It, it, it expends, it consumes, right? So that's a way of saying like it sucks. So if like you don't like something, you can say not sucks. That's useful. Yeah. So, so like a Holly Shore movie, you'd say not cool. Not cool. Yeah, if you think it really sucks. Um, all right, so we're, we were talking about, we were talking about, uh, what the hell? There we go. All right, we we're talking about animals before I got called. I'm sorry about that. Um, so we have so uh, and the other animal yeah. words that we know that I can think of are all specific animals. Are these the only two classes of animals we have words for? We don't have something like mammals or reptiles. Well, there's uh, um there's in, bugs. Oh, we have we have uh, well does zoo no, apply really. to all insects? Yeah. So we have zoo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I need to turn off the the Facebook whatever the hell it is. <laughs> the alert. Just gonna, okay, I don't know where it's coming from, but I I think I might have turned it off. I turned off my two browsers. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the word bug because I know too much entomology and bug is a specific, well, actually two specific orders of the insect class. We don't have all of the um, details on how Klingons would classify anything yet. Um, so maybe one day we'll get that. But um, for now, it's just a umbrella term for all you know, bugs, insects. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go into some of these and talk about some of the um, specific types. So let's talk, let's start with Reume, because I have gotten, um, I have, I've been here in the woods for many weeks and I've gotten very accustomed to the Reume. Um, some good vocab. So first off, let's talk about the word rau just to begin with. So rau is this really cool word in Klingon because um, uh, Klingons see rau me as like something as ram, right? What's ram? Night. In insignificant. Insignificant, right. At, it's one of those ones where the noun and the verb are completely different. So it means um, unimportant, insignificant, Whatever. Um, so Klingons think of Reume as like not not important. So there's even a proverb, Reume de Bouchko. Don't concentrate on the Reume. Don't concentrate on the unimportant things. Um, so from this, we can also even sort of use Reume to mean like details, right? Would de Bouchko be ignore? Yeah, yeah, it would be something like that, yeah. But it literally means don't concentrate on it. Um, Is it somehow different from ignore? You still pay some attention to it, but not much, rather than ignoring it completely? I, I don't think there's much of a, a I mean, there's, there's not much of a difference between tibushka and tibushko. Okay. It's yeah, just a question of Bokwit lists bushka as ignore and bush as concentrate on, focus on. Yeah, but these are pretty pretty similar to the point where they're they're pretty much interchangeable. To bushka and to bushko. So choose one uh, to say. Um, so reume can kind of be extended to mean like details. Oh Sorry, which also, one is canonical? What's up? Uh, which one is canonical as, uh, as, 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 as expression? I believe it's ko. Ko. Hmm? But both are understandable. Let me double check that that 
is the one. Ah, uh, no. So more specifically, it's not just it's So don't mind the, the blob flies. Rome is also a slang term for slavkot, which is punctuation. Um, and if you've ever read, as you've been reading the Pachbach, you've seen that in the Klingon section, right, there's not a bunch of reume, there's not a bunch of slavkot. Um, and that's because... Uh, punctuation is insignificant? Right, it's insignificant. It's, it's, it's details, it's not really completely 100% necessary, whatever. So like on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So there we go. That's the cultural understanding of Rome. So just so you know, so if somebody says to you, So we'll consider Rome uh, So we'll consider we'll consider the bugs later. What they're really meaning is we'll consider we'll talk about the minutia later on. Right. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna be saying that to me anytime soon. <laughs> Let's talk about specific no. types of oh, the same person's calling me back. Um I won't pick up. It's okay. <laughs> What's the Klingon word for stalker? Well, that's, it's not stalker, it's my grandpa. <laughs> What's the Klingon word for grandpa stalker? Uh, it is grandpa. <laughs> uh, to stalk would be that's a good question, because we don't really have a word for stalk, but... Yeah, clot. What, do, what do hunters do when they're looking for prey, then? They, you'd think they'd have a word for that. Hunting would be wam. Yeah, well, I missed a, but that implies that you yeah, were. But... <laughs> um, okay, let's, let's talk about Rome. We're getting off. Uh, Sorry. That's okay. So we have a couple of types of Rome, right? We have. Um, we have. Uh, what other kind of. We have. What other kind of how do we have? Oh, we have Vochuch. Yeah. Okay, so these are four good ones. Okay, so this would be a scorpion. Scorpion-like bug. We have an Urdukrar, which would be like a caterpillar, right? And then the Urdukrar eventually becomes um, uh, becomes a Shuan uh, Rao, which is a butterfly. Um, and then we have a vodchuch, which is um, uh, which is a, a, like a spider, an arachnid. Um, and then, of course, you can always add a tera onto the beginning of any of these to make it clear that you're talking about an earth version of this, right? Because these are all obviously Klingon terms, right? So. Often the rule is, you know, to distinguish, maybe add the terra on the first time. But if you talk about it again and again, you don't need to add the terra on every time, right? Um, so there you go. Any question on these? No, just, just, just. I'm getting. Um, I'm starting to write the big D, even middle, and the of word, even if I'm writing in English now. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to my <spider>. life. <laughs> Dunku. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions on these? Does anybody want more? I can't remember. Yes, mosquito. Very uh, important word. This is, a, this is a that's a good question. Um, so these, I believe, are all the canonically um, all the canonical uh, 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 bugs that we have. Um, but we do have some ways of talking about other bugs, right? Whenever, whenever we don't have a canonical term, it doesn't mean that we don't have a way of discussing it. It just means that we don't have a way that's 100% Mark Okrand stamped, stamp of approval kosher um, appropriate. Um, so um, I have been taking 
I have been talking about um, mosquitoes as iuremwero. So literally vampire bugs, right? Because <laughs> they, they oh. suck blood, right? And the word for vampire <clears throat> in Klingon is, um, is so iu, which means blood, right? And then rem is suck, and then wit, sucker. So blood sucker. So even sometimes when um, I'm talking with, um, you know, rum chut wit or you kreb o, I've been using the term iu rem wit. Right, just alone without the rau, right? Um, although, of course, it it helps to add the rau, especially if I'm starting off the conversation and it's not clear to somebody that I'm talking about a specific book, right? So I'm I'm thinking about clarity. Um, you can also make use of the word. Does anybody know what out means? No, out, it means to sting. So a mosquito doesn't sting, right? But maybe a bee, a bee does. And so you could say, um, right? Something like this. I would be a uh, chop. Yeah, chop is to bite, right? Much uh, How is a fly? I'm sorry. Irritating. And how would you say a fly? It's like, is it I would just call it a row. I would just call it a row. Yeah, just um, because we have, remember we have relabro, which is a glob fly. So you could even just resort to calling it um, a relabro to make sure that you're talking about a little tiny insect that flies around and is, is annoying, right? Glob fly. Right. Okay. What's a glob That makes sense. And you can even say like a pouvbo, a flying flying bug if you want to talk about just like a bug that's flying around or how much yeah how much okay is that good let's maybe talk about because we don't have a lot of fish names so let's maybe not talk about fish names let's talk about um does um nork Trans nor 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 uh, translate roughly to shark. Yep, we have some things that are. By the way, bikdep ah is not canonical. However, it was used in Yona, which is the translation of Yona by Shakram, um, and in it, it gets used to mean whale. Um, I think of what else. Um, Whenever you have to talk about a specific species, right, of anything, um, and you don't have it in Klingon, uh, it's, oh, it's okay. <laughs> um, you can just simply refer to it as what it, it generally is. So if you're talking about a trout, you can just call it a rotit, right? Uh, but maybe you wanna talk about the specific type, um, you could just use an anglicism, right? A trout hotit, right? Um, or just just call it a trout, right? Don't you don't even necessarily have to call it a hotit. But if you want to clarify that you're talking about a specific type of you know whatever, and the person might not know that's a hotit, then add um, a hotit after it. It's especially good to do that in writing, I think. Um, and when you do add anglicisms and your um, I'm going to try to italicize, and I don't know if it'll work. Nope, it didn't. Um, it's it's good when you're when you're writing in Klingon to do one of two things when you use a loan word. Um, I guess you could say that you could do a third thing as well, and I'll, I'll touch on that. So when you're using a loan word in Klingon, it's good to um, just go ahead and write it out as it's written in whatever the original language is. The other thing that's good to do is to put, uh, you can either put uh, asterisks around the word or you can italicize it. Personally, I prefer to italicize it. That's but, standard in English with loan words until they become a part of the language at which right. point you stop italicizing. Right, I think, what about this? Because I usually, I think I do use this. That's fine too. Yeah, the the guime. Yeah, those are fine too. 
Maybe it don't do actually, actually the, the one. I usually use the one, but maybe it's oh, wrong. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, hold on. There we go. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think that this is ugly as hell. Um, and I absolutely hate reading a text that has a gazillion of these in them. I much a prefer to see an italicized version because it's just way easier on the eyes. That's just my personal preference, but um, whatever. Take your pick one of, of the any of these solutions, and then one of the matter. letters I had, one of the letters I had printed in a comic book, I wanted to italicize, and I couldn't in an email, so I used the asterisk, and they printed it that way instead of italicizing it. Oh and it no! Does I hate that. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, um, and I even I have um, I do a lot of my tape typing on like one of these things, and it doesn't. I love it because like um, I can this this is like a brick. I can slam it against a wall and it would be fine and like it can bring it everywhere the one thing i don't do like you do about that it a lot is that, i'm sorry do you do that a lot no but i could if i wanted to or i could drop it you know whatever um and but the one of the things i don't like about it is it doesn't italicize and so i usually do this and then when i bring whatever i've written back into word um i just go through and i i i, I take out the the asterisks and I put yeah the global really global replace function is really nice for stuff yeah um so so and then add whatever it is so trout hotit or whatever um or you don't have to do that but you can uh and yeah and you can do that in, in klingon as well like just when you're speaking um just at just say trout i caught a trout right um or trout hotit vishukta you say it with you do, accent, trout. So what I was about to say is um, another thing that you can do is you can try to um, you can try to transliterate it, and that's a mm. bit more tricky. And I don't recommend it if, because we are not. So the thing is, we get new information about the Klingon language every year, right? And so. Um, eventually whatever you guess on right um you might be proven incorrect even if it's by a couple of letters it's still like something that you look back on and it's like oh that was that was incorrect i shouldn't have i shouldn't have um used that transliteration or whatever uh, because it's not the official transliteration right um this is always safe right because um you don't necessarily have to have a tr transliteration um and it's it's saying this you can say this right boston um because we have an official transliteration for boston right but you can you can also say boston vijach right and that's still correct but let's say you were writing a a short story or you were giving a presentation three years ago and we didn't have the transliteration for Boston and you wrote down Boston right instead because you figured that Klingons might have read it and pronounced it that way instead of um, saying it you know uh, translating it for its you know it's how it actually sounds um, you'd be a really sad panda to realize that your text is now retroactively incorrect right um so it's always best to avoid doing that now in common speech it's okay to you know to it, it, i think it's better to to go back and or to to um to pronounce things with a klingon accent the reason being um it's so ephemeral right um speech you 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 say it and then it's done right all right my grandpa's calling me again so i'm gonna stop the recording and <laughs> a German speaking English might pronounce W's as V's. Then yeah, but, it's, it, but that's the closest approximation, mm. like that they have potentially. Well, Germans have the U and the E to go U N, which is closer to when than Ben. Boy, we've really gotten off the track on this one, haven't we? Mm -hmm. A little bit. <laughs> Now we're you might about, we're talking about the way that different languages translate. How how Klingons would pronounce the word trout if they just saw it. 
Oh. Would, would it be trout, or no. would they know to substitute their AW sound and say trout? Uh, you know, honestly, I don't spend... It would depend on the Klingons' level of experience with English, I imagine. Yeah, I don't, I don't lose much sleep over it. Uh, I mean, they do have a universal translator, so yeah. they're probably just going to say to move on. Now, if you wanted to talk about a trout, might you call it a harev rote? Harev rote. Why would I call it that? Because a rainbow trout has like rainbow oh. coloring, so oh, okay. you would describe it as Oh, I'm sorry. I hate the way um, this thing cuts off the bottoms of the letters. Okay, for a rainbow fish. Be, be my guest in trying, but I doubt that it will be understood. <laughs> That's one thing that you have to think about when you're like thinking about like what to call things is like, is this going to be understood by another person? Sometimes, right? Uh, sometimes now. Like, narkok, right, is a silly way of saying rock music. But, you know, like everybody knows that rock literally means rock, right? And nar. So, and especially if you're like in a group of people who all speak the same, you know, mother language and you're making these sorts of jokes, then, so for example, you know, this, this joke works really well for people who speak and understand English, right? Um, it might not work so great if somebody didn't speak English or didn't know that rock music, um, that rock was also meant either the type of music or like a rock, right? Um, so just think about your audience, right? Okay, so we talked about Bugs, we talked about sorts of fish, we talked about yeah, like, the joys of transliterating and talking about loan words. In English, a bug can be a defect, a bug in a program yep. or Not the Klingon. But the Klingon, if you talked about that, if anything, they would think you're talking about something insignificant when a bug may be very significant. Yeah. So, so before idioms don't translate that well. Now, before two years ago, it had been two or three, maybe three years ago, um, advanced speakers would say something like no to talk about computer bugs. Um, and you can actually, in those SoundCloud um, files that I, that I sent you all the link to, they have in one of the discussions, this bunch of advanced speakers talking about, um, <clears throat> talking about, some computer program that they hated and um whatever and it was um and and they talked about there were so many Rome, um and they were talking about Rome in, in as like you know computer bug however we it was confirmed that klingons do not call computer bugs Rome. they call them car which literally means error which um makes sense Let's just talk about regular Um So we have Shar, which is a Sark, aka. That's like a horse. A horse, yeah. Um, we have. Targ. Targ, which is a Targ, which is like. Sorry, a... Yod Targ. Is, it, is your like name some. Is it like Yod Targ or what is it Yod Targ? Yes, Shield Wolf. My last name is Randall, which comes from an ancient Norse warrior uh, whose name was Rondwolf, which means Shield Wolf. So I adopted that as my Klingon name. Right. Uh, so we have Sharg, so Sark, Targ, which is uh, like a pig dog sort of thing, or Let's say a boar dog. That sounds better. Um, which is a big canine-like creature. I'll just leave it. I don't want to write all the like canine-like creature. Kovage, which is a small canine creature, right? So um, a German Shepherd would be like an example of uh, Terat Nafjau. 
and a covid would be an example of a or um like a pug would probably be a, a an example of a terat covid um people might have their own personal ideas of what would qualify as a ngavyout or what would qualify as a covid um we have a couple of words in klingon that are kind of like that so um where we have the 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 big version of something and the small version of something and they're two distinct words and you have to choose which one so we have shilat which is a bigger mirror and a neshlot which is a smaller kind of mirror and you have to and people have different conceptions about what qualifies as a shilat and what qualifies as a neshlot um we have sholdesh and mitlon these are both words for sales and um this one, the one on top is the bigger version. The one on the bottom, Mitlon, is a smaller version. Um, what's another one? Uh, we have uh, Machpin and Duk. So Machpin is a, is a big bowl, right? And Duk is a small bowl. So on and on it goes. But sorry, that's one of those pairs. Just pick what for you is a Kovic, what for you is a Ngavyaut. Just know that Ngavyaut is bigger and Kovic is smaller. Let me think about what other, oh, we have the uh, which is the common way right, of- so, so, to... Sorry, I just want to ask because I've heard people using tar just like a dog. Is that incorrect then? Just if they well, were to say I have a dog, they use the tar, I think more often. Two years ago, we got these two words, Ngafyaut and Kovic, and that was, um, that was the first time that we got anything, any confirmation of Klingons having a canine-like um, pet. We should, we should learn the word for pet, which is shaj, which y'all probably already know, but shaj is a pet. Um, and before that, we only had, we had less, you know, obviously we didn't have those words. And so um, beforehand, a lot of people did refer to dogs as tar because we don't have tar and they wanted to use the the word tar um, and because tar are kind of treated much in the same way that as we treat dogs right they're these friendly companions um, and because it's kind of like a mix between a dog and a boar right uh, so it's it's both incorrect and correct <laughs> um, I would say it's less correct now because we have Ngafyaut and Kovic, but also be prepared for people to use it in that way. Sound good? Mm -hmm. I would encourage you, now that we have the words, to use these two words. So that's just me. Um, we have Virro, which is commonly translated um, as cat. Uh, it's a sort of feline animal that Klingons have. Um, we even have a, we have certain sorts of viejro as well. We have a tikkat viejro. Um, and in fact, there's, um, there's a simile in Klingon. So bit tikkat viejro. I don't know if we've talked about similes yet, but y'all might know about how similes are formed in Klingon. So in Klingon you say, uh, so in English you would say, um, uh, they're nervous as uh, a tikkat feline, whatever, a taka cat. Um, but in Klingon, you say the thing, so bit, to be nervous, or he, she, it, they are nervous. And then you add, you put in a semicolon in, in the English transliteration, or the, tra the English, um, uh, the romanization is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then you say, so they're nervous. Um, they resemble a taka cat. Um, yeah. And then Rishnar is the other one. Yeah, I was trying to remember what it was. Rishnar. And I don't usually use this one. And, and honestly, um, I know only a few people who actually use this to refer to Terran cats. But it does get used in that way, and, and you can totally do that, and that's fine. Um, maybe Specifically, Tearing cats or no, no, it's just, it's, just, it's specifically uh, a Grishnar cat, whatever the hell that is, maybe a less common. Um, but this Vichro is the Chijat to Grishnar's Chishlach. But one question 
What yep. about, uh, for example, a lion? Ah, How do you that's see a good a lion? one. I had to, this was a problem for me because, uh, or it wasn't a problem for me actually, because we have a way, a sort of standard way of talking about lions um, and big cats in general. Um, so when I did Wizard of Oz, I used that standard way and we typically people call it a virroa. So a major, a major uh, feline. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or I suppose if you were really, I, I have never heard this, but I guess it would be okay. I've never heard somebody say a but go for it if you're so inclined. Understand. But uh, one question, if we have, uh, if we're talking about a painter or lion or something, would everybody be uh, Vihiro A, for example? If we're talking about a what? A paint? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you, you, types of cats. you know, you could refer to it as a Vihiro A cage. Remember, this is not lion, it's just major, it's a major feline, so big cat, right? So it'd be okay to refer to, like, if you're talking about a panther, um, you could say maybe Vihrokhij, right? A black, a black big cat. Um, African big cat, if we have a word for Africa. We do have a word. For lion. Or Indian big cat for tiger, if we have the word for India. Yeah. We also have a bunch of animals okay. that we don't really know the the um we don't really know what the hell they are we have a hoon we have a cat we have a cat home um we have yeah. we have uh i've been working on my dictionary and these uh entry for type of animals takes up half a page well it did when it was two columns it's it's less now but it's a big entry for type of animal. On yeah. it. Can't specify. Um, I tend to use these things for my own. Uh, we also have a Josh Lo Kha. So Kha are apparently really, um, um, are really popular. I'm trying to think of other. Um, we have Kha, which is a slime devil. Again, whatever that is. <laughs> um, so this is a Don Khat, so it apparently is known for waking up in the morning and making a lot of noise, but it's not a bird. Right. We, have the we have the Hoon, which is known for its speed. There is a line in the Pakbat um, where it's, it's written, Nom Leng Hoon Nom, let's see, Nom Leng Hoon, Nom Leng Kutlut. So stories travel faster than a than a croon. If you type type of animal into Boquit, you get 33 entries. Oh, oh yeah, um, I didn't to do that. Thank you, that's gonna be very helpful for me um, as we go through the rest of this. Yeah, we have an air, again, that's a sort of animal that we don't know what it is. We have a Bokrat, again, we don't know what it is. Um, Chembach is another one that kind of gets used for lion sometimes. Um, so maybe consider um, using that if you're thinking about lions or big cats. Um, we have, here, I'm going to erase this. So write it down real quick if you want to. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, we have a uh, ling top. We have. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Bone is a lizard like animal. Da. We have a uh, kin chop. So that's, I'm going to get to that one in a second because that is one that we know what it looks like. Uh, I could go on, but there, oh, Tlonrad. Tlonrad, we actually kind of know what it looks like. So pay attention, it's Tlonrad and not Tlonrad, right? So it's Tlonrad. Um, and a Tlonrad is just basically like um, a more vicious, a more vicious version of a tar, basically. And what? The English name for that? Plongat. Plongat. Sure, yeah, Plongat. <laughs> That's what Duo says it is. So I don't know. I don't <laughs> learn. Honestly, I don't learn the romanization because uh, it 
the English transliteration because it's just like I'm never going to use I barely use it in Klingon so <laughs> how, how did the, all these words come up I mean they're not in Star Trek right so and they don't have any they're not they, there aren't any pictures of them so where in the canal did they like why do we have so many words and we don't know what it is like I think at least some of them come from like the novels well they'll just drop the name of it and then move on without describing it. Right. And Dr. Urkran has retroactively canonized them. Um, so yeah. All right, some other ones that actually have Terran equivalents that we know of and that we can talk about um, are, we have uh, Gitrak, which is a sheep sort of animal. Um, we have uh, an etlevan, which is an elephant, right? So it's just a transliteration. Um, we have a milod, which is like a bear. Um, we have a rachair, which is a goat-like animal. Um, nabeb, which is a frog or a toad. The same thing for Klingons. Vet. Yeah, vet. That's that's a good type of row that we skipped over. Thank you. Um, that's a cockroach. Oh yeah, that cockroach. Yeah, vet, vet, vet. vet. Yep, that cockroach. Yep, vet. A lung, which is a type of lizard, apparently, but it gets used in a way that um, is. It kind of encompasses. Um, it kind of snake used to mean lizard. So lung. Um, would it be a lung a? Yeah, so there's um there's also a lung a, which is just a bigger type of lizard. Right? Did the Bible translators come up with a serpent? Oh, that's car, isn't it? Originally uh, serpent or worm, and then it became serpent worm. Rar. 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 Okay. Of yeah. top, which is a newt. If top emerge at Kashmoch, she turned me into a newt. Uh, we have a loon ot, which is a bigger lizard. Uh, think of like a, a um, moto dragon. Moto dragon, yeah, that's a good example. Um, we have rar, as uh, Yotar points out, which is worm slash serpent. So. We have a turtle, but I don't remember the name. Oh yeah, we do have turtle. Um, Lachiv. That's a turtle. Yep. Kesh, which is a yeah, rat. exactly. I was waiting when Eric you and we are going to say the most important animal of them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, last year during the Shep Cap, uh, Hul and I, or was it Hul and I? No, it was uh, Archa and I. We were out at a bar, and it was called the Jackalope. And um, we were wondering how to translate jackalope into, we spent like like a minute or two just sitting at the bar, like wondering how we, because we wanted to text Hula to tell him where we were. And we were like, but wait, we gotta, we can't just like write jackalope. We have to give him like a little bit of a puzzle. So we were thinking, how do we, how do we translate jackalope into, into Klingon? And then we thought, you know, poop, chash, right? So a poop is an antler or a, um, or a uh, like a horn it's a poop yeah it's a horn yeah a horn or an antler so a horn rabbit right i think it was a pretty good translation what but did it's, it's, say? Jackalo? what's a jackalo it's a, uh, it's, a <laughs> it's a rabbit with antlers yeah it's a mythological creature it's not a real creature but very popular in the american southwest yeah can you write it in a chat the english name uh yeah somebody our, uh, let's see, where can I find the chat? Thanks. Thanks. Oh, you got it. I think half the bars in my hometown had a taxidermied jackalope head hanging yeah. somewhere. Yeah, and what's really messed up is, yeah, people, people who are taxidermists make real jackalopes. So they're just poor rabbits that get stuffed and then they no. like stick horns on the rabbit. I know. No. I know. What time we got? Okay. 
Um, okay, so anyway, Pooch Ash <laughs> and Jackalope. <laughs> Let me get the, um, the list again. I'll talk about alligator or crocodile in a second, but I just wanted to type of animal so they can have easier reference. There was we, there was this word for giraffe, but I don't remember it. Not that I know of. I think so. This is an alligator. A big earth water reptile. Yep. Earth water. Oh, maybe it wasn't. Earth, it wasn't earth, earth big water, water crocodile. Yep. Earth water big crocodile. Yep. Uh, Lung a can also be used to refer to like, um, you might hear it being used to refer to dragons. So you could maybe even call it a cool lung a dragon, right? A fire lung a or a uh, lung a, uh, flying lung a, right? Um, we have a shui, which is like a piggy. We have a tangka, which is a bull like animal. Do we have another bacon? one of those? Uh, I don't know. What was that, Caitlin? Uh, sui is another pun. Oh, shui. yeah. Shui. Shui. Remember? Shui. But, but she's saying the word that you use to call pigs. Sui. Oh, I gotcha. 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 Uh, those, that's everything that I'm seeing. In the future, we might get more um, land animal words. I hope we do. And I, among them, I hope that giraffe is one of the oh um another great one um that uh, so corvette is like a rat or a mouse corvette's good and again, and do... not, these are all approximative translations they're they all come with the caveat or except for the transliterated ones of um whatever the insert type of animal here equivalent on chronos right or or wherever in the empire Okay. Uh, is there no. luxury of both the turtle and the tor tortoise? Tortoise, the the land and the and the water one. Should yeah, be right? not yeah. that we know yeah. of. It's, it's both. It's just yeah. Whenever it's something where you know in English it's a it's a distinction. Um, think it might not be one in in English or in. Klingon. To be fair, most English speakers don't discriminate between the <laughs> two very well either. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my friends tell me, oh, we got a turtle, and I get over there, and it's a tortoise. Um, now, Klingons will use Chagabach as an insult. Do they ever use specific animals, like Korvit? We would call somebody a rat, but I don't know if that would mean anything to a Klingon. That's a... Uh, that, they I would mean, use them in the similes, like you mentioned, something like a rat, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't just say somebody you are a rat or something would they that's very English. I cannot, I cannot speak for klingons i can speak for humans who speak klingon <laughs> or well, speak to what they would say well, I would, we've been I told would... that Kagebach is invective yes but yeah, we yeah. haven't been told about any but we don't specific slime animal. devil slime devil is definitely canonical as an insult yeah kot is definitely like you don't want to be a cot right um, so in English, right, so corvette is like, if you say somebody's a, cor a, a rat, then you're saying that they're like, um, they have- Untrustworthy. Right, they have bad morals. They're kind of like uh, snidely whiplash, right? Um, so they're, yeah, they're, and they're sort of selfish. Um, that's an, that's an English thing. Um, uh, or, or, you know, in, in, in French, I know that, you can do that. You can call somebody a rat and it's a bad thing too. And it's much of the same stuff. Um, I, I can imagine a Klingon, a real, an IRL Klingon speaker uh, taking that from English and using it um, the same way. Like, as far as we know, it's only in the similes. Or, right. So dirty like a pig like or that. something. Uh, but we do have some canonical ones. Um, so we know that um, Dor uh, is associated with Tirla. So if you're a Tirla, if you say to somebody, ah, Tirla, da, da, you're acting, you're acting like a Tirla or a Tigla, whatever the transliteration is. That means you're being silly. 
right? You're being dog. Uh, or you could say darur uh, as well. Yeah. Um, if you're saying that somebody I think we talked about this already. You're saying they're being they're being nervous. They're being a regmor. They're being a worry wart. Right? There are these words that, that will come up at a KLCP, the next KLCP, the, two, the second one. You're supposed to know all the words, basically. And these words, I don't know if worry words is one of them, but there are a few on Duolingo, which are like for me, okay, I don't even know what that really means. Like. I can go, I don't really have a feeling how to use it even in English. So let's yeah. like remember that blah, 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 blah means blah, blah, blah in Klingon, but I don't, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and a lot of the animal names are kind of frustrating because you don't, you know, you don't know what the heck they I'm are. So I've never know. heard this word in English, never, ever before Duolingo. What did she never hear? Worry word. 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 Oh, worry word. That's such Somebody a good word. Worries excessively. Regmore. Yeah. I know. I know it's worry, but I've, I've never heard it like in apart from the Duolingo. Outside of Duolingo, I've never heard anyone use it. Yeah. I I I use it sparingly, not often, but I do use it. It would it would be someone who is worried about uh, bug stuff, they, right? They worry you, excessively. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're thinking about bug stuff. Uh, there is also another one that I also took a lot of time to understand. It's a uh, Ishehim. Kamujun. Uh, so it was, I think it's just a... Uh, Ishehim? Ishehim. Yeah, but, oh, uh, Ishehim. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't know that word. Yeah, Kamujun. Yeah, uh, Oh yeah, that's Carmagion, yeah. exactly. Like what this Car Carmagion and it's a great word. It should him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also have Carmagion. okay. I need a I, I English course, I think, right now, because yeah, exactly. uh, I don't know what at all. Uh, uh j just a, a a short note. Uh I I have uh, made the the translation for the Bakui to Portuguese. Uh -huh. And oh my god, I have found so many complex word that I have that I don't think that is in Portuguese. So I have no idea. That was very, very hard. <laughs> but it's fun. Yeah. There was a word for a parrot, I think. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get into that into a second when we get into birds. Um, but um, th the other one I wanted to mention, which is great, is klib. So there uh -huh. is incomp So klib is a word that means to be incompetent. So this means they're as incompetent as a topa, topa. whatever that is. Um, and also, topaj is a good word to know, um, especially if you've listened to Power Klingon, because on Power Klingon, um, you get to know um, some of the holidays that Klingons uh, celebrate. And we learned that Klingons um, eat something called topaj, what is it? Topaj nucho lukbor. So stuffed tobaj and uh, stuffed tobaj legs. Tobaj ush luhod lukbor. And we also learned that you can, from from that, that potentially you can say, um, to say like you got a little bit of something, or a little bit of something, you can add a home onto it. So chok luklej dak, tobaj ush home, tobaj ush home, hod lukbor tobu. There's a little, you got a little bit of toe badge stuck in your teeth. <laughs> How do you stuff an animal's leg? Got to be a big leg. Big leg. But, I mean, it's solid meat. There's. I mean, it's got a you, solid. You, you do a roulade with it, man. Debone it, maybe is. butterfly it a little bit. Oh. Uh, yeah. Stuff toe so badge. If you take the bone out, then there's room to stuff it. Okay. I don't cook, so. Um. Okay, so let's talk about Boat or maybe we'll wait a little bit for Kreb O to get back. Um, why don't we take a two, like a minute break, and then um, we'll come back and talk about birds. Sound good? Mm -hmm. I um, so, yeah, okay. Ooh, hold on, there we go. We got, we got some birds we gotta talk about. Let's talk about some birds. Birds. Um, uh, so in some ways, some of the birds are kind of like, it's the same shtick with, 
as with um, as with uh, some of the animals, right? Um, we have general ideas about what um, about what they are, but uh, only a few have equivalents that we can, you know, attach an image of a bird to, right? Um, we have something that's kind of useful is that a lot of birds, more so than some of the animals, have uh, known characteristics. So we can at least use them, um, you know, for poetry or, or whatever, um, or if we want to say, if we want to use them in similes. So a conrad is known for its song, right? It sings, um, as is a parbing, I believe. Let me check. I don't believe it's known for its song, but it has a uh, particularly um, garish coloring. Extend this out. There we go. Um, one thing that, and then we have this other one, rau. And be careful about this, right? Don't make it a, a rau, right? It's not a rau, it's a rau. Anybody remember from our weather lesson what rau means? Lightning. Lightning. Yeah, yesterday it rowed here. Um, so, but it's a rau, and it's known for having particularly colorful plumage. And it's aquatic. Yes, aquatic, colorful. Cool. Um, and then we have toke, which is really useful um, because it's just the general word for a bird of prey. Dotnal and Datvit. They are two, two types of similar animals, um, and they often get used to mean duck. I'll give you two seconds to figure out why that is. Donald. Yeah, and Daffy. Yep, Donald and Daffy. Yep. <laughs> Um, and they're both known for being erratic, right? Um, that's what they're known for. So maybe you think geese, I don't know. Um, we also have Lear, which you Duolingo, Dingo, Duolingo <laughs> users might know. No? Owl. I have oh. a double guitar, I think, in Duolingo. Lear. No, I had one where it just said, the green bird helps me. It, ah. it, I didn't know that it had a word for, I don't know why they didn't use owl then instead of bird. Ah. I guess because they hadn't introduced the word owl in the course yet. Yeah. I typically talk about borgel if I'm talking about a chicken. Um, and then, I, and again, that's just me. <coughs> but, you know, because um because they produce tasty eggs right it's i i believe it's you know good equivalent and whatever add on a terra in front of it um i don't typically do that but you, you do that um there's uh also ushreb which is like a rooster um similar animal right um, before it got canceled this year, in France, I was going to do um, the Ushreb Kep, the rooster meeting, because the rooster is the symbol of France, and it was supposed to be in, in Lille, and it got canceled. Um, actually, it got, canceled, it got uh, postponed, and it's happening later this month. So if you speak French and you want to participate, then that would be amazing. We'd love to have you. I thought it was because you were going to have it really early in the morning. <laughs> well, or it's going to be really early in the morning for me, but. So you're actually going to France? No, I'm not going to France, but we're going, it, it got postponed and then we, did, we decided to put it online. So it's going to be online on Zoom now. So if y'all want to participate. But, but it's for speaking French, not for speaking Klingon. It's for French speakers learning Klingon. Oh. How many uh, people are in this group right now? I don't know, uh, before we canceled it, or postponed it, I keep on saying canceled, before we changed it, um, I think we had like seven people who were gonna come to the physical meeting. So not huge, but you know. Okay. 
Um, we have a walk boat. Oh, a, a push toke is like a hawk. Gen two, like a penguin. Oh. Now that's another pun. Is it? Yeah, that's a yeah. specific type of penguin. G E N T O O. Oh, and I remember realizing that it was a pun, and uh, I think I was I think Dr. Okran was there when I realized it was, and I was like, oh no, this bad. Um, that happens sometimes. We have uh Notka, which is um this is also another pun. <laughs> Never again, right? Note is never, and ka is the suffix meaning again. Therefore, this is a raven. Yeah, or like a crow, yeah. Um, and then we this have a, a cot roll, which is a bigger version of that. It's um, like a bigger note ka. If you, I, I put out an ebook uh, of Klingon haiku on the KLI website, and it's called Josh Katro. The Katro screams. <laughs> um, screams. <laughs> it's very. It's it's it's, it's pretty in Klingon. <laughs> Is there a word for eagle? For an eagle. Probably just uh, toke. Yeah, use a toke. Uh. Yeah, um, toke. Ah, that's I'm not sure. I just yeah, just go with toke. Or again, toke chish. Yeah, toke chish or not toke. toke if you're going for a bald eagle, uh, whatever. Um. All right, into the carrots. Uh, the parrots. Uh, <laughs> so these are all parrot like birds, and they all are capable of uh, speaking, I believe. Yeah, they're, they're capable of mimicking speech. Before anybody says, <laughs> before anybody asks about it, you may choose whether or not you want to add may or poop onto these. Maltz personally does not put poop on them because he's never had an intelligible conversation with any of them and doesn't expect that he would. Um, so it would appear that not only do you, can you, is the um, requirement that, that, the, that the, um, the thing you be able to use speech, but be able to use it um, intelligently. So Do those they have last... able to have conversations, trans transmit information, whereas what these things are doing um, is just repeating a sound that they heard, yeah. which is not exactly Do... speech. Do those last two names have anything to do with karaoke? Um, I don't know why, but I, uh, I don't know why they're they're they might. I don't know. Villain Chod, I always think that this is, I, I'm not sure if this is a pirate pun. Yeah, this is a pirate pun. This is a reference to Captain Flint, Long John Silver's parrot in Treasure Island. Oh. Villain, villain Captain, Villain Chod. There you go. Um, and that's... Which one should you use when you have a pirate at home? And you want to say that I have a pirate, so which one? Pick your pick. Just choose one and go with it. <laughs> um, if it's particularly big, then maybe go with a karyok ah. But if it's not, then maybe just go without the ah. Would a parakeet be a karyok home? Sure. Why not? <laughs> uh, we also have the infinitely, oh, I, I like walk boach. That's a bird with a particularly long um, uh, neb which we probably should talk about. A neb is a beak or uh, it, it's also, so neb is a really cool word because um, sometimes in Klingon, uh, body words get used to refer to um, devices or like, objects that resemble. So neb- Like axe handles? Yeah, like axe handles, right? Or, or um, sword handles, right? So dash is an example of that. 
Um, Neb is one of these. And Neb, um, when, uh, let's see, it can be like, uh, uh, what's the, what's the thing? Um, on, like on a garden hose. Uh, Neb. <laughs> nozzle. A nozzle, thank you. It can be used to mean a nozzle. We also have the words um, either Jordanub or Jordaneb, which is, um, uh, <laughs> which is a, 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 like on the top of a, a peng, a missile, and it's a... Uh, Nose cone? Warhead? Warhead, thank you. That's what happened. Uh, actually, actually, in, in Swedish, uh, the beak, which I had to check because I didn't know what the beak was in English. Oh, okay. Uh, but but the, the, the beak in Swedish is neb. Is it? Yeah, it's written N. Wait, I'll write in the chat. That uh, might be a problem. Like that. I, oh, I can't see. Hold on. Oh, maybe, maybe. Uh, it's a pun or a, or a reference then. Uh, so yeah, so sometimes it happens. Um, a is a jorneb's an exploding beak. Yeah, yeah. So we have the word jor, right, which means to explode, and neb, which means beak. So oh, or neek, or neek. Some other useful bird words: um, tell, wing, which means wing. Yeah, poof, flap. Fly. Fly. Or fly. Lap. Lock is to. Is That's to, flat. Yeah. yeah. Lock is also um, slang for to speak gibberish. Uh, and lock lock is a noun form of that. It's a slang term for gibberish. Float. Anybody know this one? Float is great. It is to land on water like a bird. So it's not, for example, when the astronauts are coming down and landing, that's a normal land. Oh, no, 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 no. On, on the water, when they're landing on the water. It would be like a bird. So you soar down and then you sort of land on the water, right? Instead no, of no, no. splashing down, right? Um, the word for to soar, by the way, is kaj. It's to soar. Kaj. Um, and clot is great. I, I tend to, if I'm talking about like a water plane, I call it like a clot wit mood So uh, oh, it is. So landing on water would be, no, maybe it wouldn't be. No, but think but about how are, it mean, lands. It does it like a bird, right? It goes, it goes like this and then very slowly um, land. It lands smoothly, right? There's a small horizontal. That, yeah. Whereas, uh, whereas like a, a Astronauts, they they're they just fall slowly, <laughs> right? And they're, you know, there's a parachute that that uh, that slows their descent, but they're still creating quite a quite a splash when they land in the water, right? Um, okay, some other oh, there's a word to fall slowly, like snow head yeah, head, but that would be that would not be the appropriate term for. Um, for for the for the uh, capsule, I would say poom. <laughs> or even just though it's all land. Flowing? What? No, I would not even say. That, I would not call the capsule landing in the water ped. I would hmm. not say that, that qualifies. Shock is to land. Um, some other useful animal words are lem. Means hoof. What's a hoof? Like um, on a pig or a cow, right? Uh, the you know, a horse's hoof, the, the horse's where the, ah, like the, the toenails are all fused into a single element. That's a yes. hoof. I think that's something like that in Swedish too. Um, what other kind of animal words do we have? Uh, Namwetch, that's a paw. Shook. What about fang Ale. or claw? Claw would be uh, would be um, nit potch, or sorry, just a potch, not a nit potch. A nit potch is a is a fingernail. 
a potch is a nail or a claw. Um, a thing. That's a really good question. Um, hope judge. Ooh, there might be another word for that, but let me check. Just, just tooth, huh? Yeah, and maybe sharp tooth. I talk about it being. Yeah, there's no. Um, there's no word for a fang, but um, you could say a hope or a judge. Yeah, a sharp judge. Yeah. Um, I think that next week we should go into body words. Speaking of all of this, um, there's a lot of stuff to learn, especially finger and toe wise. <laughs> yeah, I saw those pictures that were posted a week or two ago. There are so many words. Yeah, we got um, yeah. we got your here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because we're, we're we're out of time. Uh, yeah, you get your shen wit or real wit if you're a kid. Uh, you got your shik wit, your kai wit, your kai wit, your kai wit, your kan wit, and then on your toes, you got your kai wit. You got your um, what is it? Home wit. You got your rosh wit, non wit, and your kite wit. Oh, this is a more wit, not a not a kite wit. I got these mixed up. More wit. Yeah. Our toys. It's, it's our toys. Toy yeah. home go. Little piggies. Yeah, they're all they're all puns to do with the little piggies. But I, again, I don't really remember them that way. But so strange. Would, could you call toes sweet home go little piggies? Oh, it's, by the way, it's a moderate. I, 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 get, I gotta go back and revise because I, I, had, I, had, I had to think about this for a second before I remembered and then I got this wrong. But actually, um, by a vowel, um, but actually the, so the, there's the moderate, which is the big toe. Um, and we have the verb mod, which means to use the big toe. Um, and then we have a word that is very similar and it's more, and it means to be, um, to be, uh, It means to be more. What's the gloss? Um, to be like um, not flexible, but to be. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say flingons. Flingons must have flexible toes because they have that one way of insulting somebody by pointing a toe at them or something. Um, oh, to be agile. That's the that's the gloss. Yeah, to be dexterous. Um, there is a term petville roche, which also means to be to be agile, to be uh, dexterous. Um, and no, there's no way to insult somebody by pointing a toe at somebody. Um, but there are some cool ways of, uh, there are some cool phrases that you can say in Klingon using toe and finger words. And Petville Roche is one of them. Uh, we can get into this next week. Um, something that I just, I just want to say that it's very um, strange that the Klingons might have different words for each toe, which even doesn't even exist in English. If they're not into details, they don't like, like, small talk and like unnecessary words so why the hell do they have different words i love having a name for each toe and each finger i, I find but that really unclean on to have that i, I don't i don't agree I, I, yeah i disagree i very much disagree <laughs> um the only insulting term that we have right now that if you point your conwit so this your little finger at somebody and do this that's insulting because to um, so khan is a word that means to use your little finger. It's also a word that means to be, what is khan as a stative verb? Uh, old, old. Old, right. So when you point your finger at somebody and you do this, you're saying they're old. And sometimes when you're at uh, the kep a, right, you might be speaking to somebody who's been around for a while and khan really likes to do this. He'll be speaking and then um, uh, he'll like forget a word and he'll like have to think about it. And then he'll remember it and he'll say, ah, jakosh, and then he'll do this. Which, when he does that, he's saying, I'm old, right? <laughs> so um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fun way of joking around. Um, okay, I'm gonna go and maybe make some ramen for lunch. Can I, can I just say one, one thing, which is share one, one thing before, sure. before we... Uh, I don't know if you've all seen it, it's on Learn Klingon, and I was like laughing like hell because we were talking like earlier, like I don't know, a half an hour ago or some, about something, how to uh -huh. say something. And there was this uh, question raised, how would you say in Klingon to someone who sneezes? Or is it Klingons don't sneeze? Mm -hmm. 
And I really like the answer. Klingon does not sneeze. They achieve honor and glory by violently expelling the germs from their nose. A greater internal battle does not exist for a warrior. The proper response is kapna. <laughs> it's of course not canonical, but I love the answer. Who posted that? Um, Ward Samson, do you know that? I don't know him. No, <laughs> but it's good. Sometimes when people sneeze, I just say, oh, you sneezed, <laughs> which is <laughs> actual, you sneezed. Because <laughs> I'm so used to saying, bless you, right? Um, Here's what I was thinking of the phrase, Literally, I use my second toe at my enemy. Mm, I'm going to have to look that up. Mm. It, it's from an issue of Cholkhead, uh, June of 2001, in the Friend of Maltz article. Gotcha. All right, cool. Thank you. Alan Anderson uh, says, uh, he's, he wrote that he says, when someone sees it, he says, so don't don't, don't infect me. <laughs> don't infect me. That's great. All right, Maj. Jajach. Tour. Yemev.